Hello friends, my name is Togapen, and I do art. If you watched my last video where I showed my process of drawing, I actually referenced this video on how I do my shading process. If you've seen some of my art on here or my websites, you'll notice that I have a very distinct way of shading. It really adds dimension and depth to any shape that I want to present. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. In this video, I'm going to be using a regular cylinder that I'm going to be turning from a 2D surface to a 3D surface in about three steps. Easy. Let's do it. First, we start with the base color. In another video, we can go over choosing colors and things like that, but right now, we're here. On Procreate, if you're lazy like I am, there's an option to fill in your color if you create a solid outline, and I use this tactic every single time. Because, once again, I am lazy. <laughs> this is going to be your platform to go off of for your dimension layer. When you get to dimension, you're going to start off with a multiplied layer at 50% using the same base color and define the edges of the shape that's going further away from you. And it's already going to create the idea that there is depth in this drawing. And that's really solidified by the lighting layer, where you use a lighter color to create this idea that an object or part of an object is getting closer to you. I do want to say that these dimension layers aren't really influenced by light like the shadow layers are. Think about it like you're simply making it a shape. That's it. So here, I'm going to go in the depth about my shadowing process. When I start a shadow layer, I copy the base layer and bring it over all of my other layers, and set it to multiply and lower the opacity. And when I say this is easy for me, I mean it. Because after I do all that, all I have to do is erase where I think the light would be hitting and then smudge. After I've gotten what I actually want on my canvas, I can erase any of the messiness and tweak it where I see fit. I consider this really helpful because it takes away all the guesswork and the color theory that I so badly need to learn. But until I do learn it, I'm gonna stick with this. With that being said, next up is lighting. Like I said in my last video, the lighting stage has the least amount of drawing on it since it's supposed to be a highlight. This one is dictated by the light source. For example, if you have a light source that's directly in front of your subject, then the lighting is going to be on their entire face, save for a few areas. I typically do artworks that have dramatic lighting from behind or the side, so my art is a good example of using highlights sparingly. Okay, that's it. Wasn't really just shading, was it? I know that my art already looks kind of complicated, but when you're using this tactic, it really adds another dimension to your art and a sense of refinement to your drawing. And once you learn how to master this completely, I think you'll really start to see improvements in your art that you didn't even know could be there. I hope you like this video. Um, I've got a couple more on the way, so please let me know if there's anything you guys want to learn in the comment section, and subscribe! In the meantime, feel free to take a look at the time-lapse video for my drawing process video, and I'll be working on some new stuff and getting the hang of this art creator thing. So I hope you stay on this journey with me, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.